Channel 6 News. I'm Jeannie Lurchin along with Paul Haneke with a look at what's happening in and around the Tri-Community area this week. At the September 10th School Board Special Meeting, Board President Dale Chesney made a motion to narrow the field of candidates applying for the job of School District Superintendent down from four to one. Fellow board member Sue Heyer voiced her reservations about how the interview process was conducted. Wait a minute. We've lost some steps in the process here. Where, where was the visitation? Where is the second set of interviews? We don't, I, wait a minute. You're going to have to help me understand this. We interviewed four people for an hour and 15 minutes, and we're ready to make a recommendation? Mrs. Heyer then went on to question the legality of actions taken by the board. I have great concern with Cascade Consulting. I have great concern that we would not, at a minimum, withhold the payments. In fact, what we should do, I believe, is ask for a, ref ask for a refund. The fact that board members have interviewed these candidates privately is a violation of the Open Meetings Act. The way this field has been narrowed is a violation of the Open Meetings Act. I will not continue to be part of this process. I so, am asking that we stop this process. It, it, it appears we have violated the Open Meetings Act. Um, I ask that we withhold payment. After much discussion and several motions, Mr. Davis suggested each board member state the name of the candidates they would recommend. Five board members named Holtz as their choice. Both Mrs. Heyer and Mrs. Murray indicated they would not be part of this process. Each board member um, will start with the uh, with first choice. Mrs. Heyer? I'm not participating in this process. Mrs. Murray? I'm also not. Mr. Holtz, uh, Dr. Holtz. Dr. Holtz. Dr. Holtz. Dr. Holtz. Dr. Holtz. At the end of the meeting, Chesney phoned the school attorney and was told that, in fact, all the actions taken were legal. I, I want to make a, just a, a brief statement to conclude this meeting on behalf of uh, um, the viewers of Channel 6 that we did have a discussion with our legal counsel um, for Romeo School District, and there was nothing um, that was done illegally. There, were, there will be... Uh, uh, our legal counsel will contact uh, the board members that uh, did object and, and um, at least feel uh, or believe that the, or there was something done um, in error or wrong. Uh, our legal counsel did participate in the process um, to an extent through the guidance of, uh, of Cascade as well. And they will follow up with uh, Mrs. Murray and Mrs. Heyer to, uh, to be able to provide them with uh, uh, the answer to their question, but uh, just to be clear as this board meeting ended um, with some confusion that there was nothing done illegally. So we will uh, initiate the process to uh, follow through with the uh, board's um, decision to enter into final negotiations for the superintendent with Dr. Um, Lowell Holtz. Thank you. The board also held their regular meeting on September 14th. And we'll have more on that meeting in our next newscast. The Village Downtown Development Authority has begun the process of cleaning up behind some of the local restaurants downtown. They've completed construction on the dumpster corral that houses all the dumpsters into one closed off area. The corral helps with a cleaner look and will be less offensive to the nose. The Village Planning Commission held a portion of their meeting at the old Macomb County Road Commission site on Clinton Street. The commission met to consider a future Macomb Orchard Trail Park. They approved a concept for Phase 1, and more information will be brought back to the table at a later date. Even though the Samaritan House has been open and in operation at their new address on Van Dyke for a few months now, they officially held their grand opening September 10th. Director Pamela Zent fills us in on what's been going on since then. Today is our open house for our new building. We're inviting the entire community in to tour the building and learn more about Samaritan House and meet our benefactors. We're expecting them shortly. 
Um, we went out of our way to send invitations to all the community leaders that we could reach and um, all the businesses that are so supportive of us. We want them, again, to come and feel a part of Samaritan House because they certainly support us to the extent that we wouldn't be here without them. Um, and our volunteers are here today, so you can meet them and maybe even decide that you want to be a volunteer from once you take a look around and see what's going on. Along with celebrating their grand opening, the ceremony was also an opportunity to honor and thank the Corion family for their generous donation that enabled Samaritan House to make some major renovations. Uh, we're having an open house uh, to celebrate our new building. We had a wonderful financial gift from Maria and Bob Corion, and this enabled us to purchase this site. We have invited um, all of our volunteers, the members of the church that support us, the businesses that house our Making Change cans, people that support the golf outing, and we'd like to, them to see what a wonderful building we have. Pastor Douglas Shepherd shares his thoughts about Samaritan House. The community, I think, is affected in a very positive way because it brings businesses, volunteers, churches, and the, the people of this community together to do what we need to do in helping people. Um, as you can see, our shelves are not full. And they're, they're not full because due to these times, everything that we are all aware of, people have to come in times that are d demanding for them for food, other services that we hope to be able to provide. Our clientele is larger than it's ever been. But we can look around us in every way. And so we just want to acknowledge the people that make all of this possible. Those from the business community, those from the private community that provide so many donations for us, and these volunteers that are the glue that hold our organization together so that we can provide this service for those that fall under the times that we live in for the need that is so great today. And speaking about community service, the folks at St. John Lutheran Church are setting aside a day of community service. Here is Mae Morrison to tell us about the event. Thanks, Jeannie. What's going on at St. John Lutheran is we are canceling our services on October 11th, 2009. We are planning a day of service projects. Um, first and foremost, we are planning a coat store. We're currently in the midst of a coat drive. We are looking for your used and gently worn coats, mittens, hats, and gloves, and we'll be handing them out on the day of our service project day. If you know of someone in the community who is in need of a nice warm winter coat, please let us know at St. John Lutheran. The number there is 586-752-4588. Our confirmation and youth group will be out in the community on Sunday, October 11th, collecting canned goods for a food drive for Samaritan House. We're also planning a quilt tie. In. Uh, Jan Alling, one of our members, is, belongs to a group that quilts for local organizations and they have committed to 200 quilts this fall. And so we'll be having a quilt tie-in in in our basement. We also have activities for Sunday school kids. Uh, we'll be making sock monkeys and no-sew fleece blankets for children at social services. We're having a Red Cross blood drive that day. And last but not least, we are having a flu shot clinic. If you have not gotten your flu shot yet, you can get one October 11th. We are accepting Medicaid or the shot is $25. Again, um, call St. John Lutheran at 586-752-4588. That shoot, flu shot appointment has to be made in advance. So that's just a little bit of what's going on. Um, check out our website at St. John. It is stjohnromeo.org and find out about all the rest of our great events. Thanks for your time. Did you know there once was a cigar factory in Romeo? Well, if you're curious in knowing where and when it was, the Historical Society will be hosting the last of its four themed walking tours on Thursday, September 24th. This tour will center around Romeo's business district, and you'll